First at Five. From the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. Welcome to WUFT News First at Five. I'm Allison Williams. And I'm Camila Pereira. Thanks for joining us. A historic moment for any former president, Donald Trump booked on criminal charges. In this case, it involves hush payments. Former President Trump pleaded not guilty to 34 felony counts of falsifying business records, and protesters and politicians are speaking out about the arraignment. NBC's Alice Barr is in Washington and tells us what people are saying. History unfolding inside a Manhattan courtroom today with former President Trump pleading not guilty to 34 counts of falsifying business records and conspiracy for his alleged role in hush money payments to two women leading up to the 2016 election. The political effects already rippling across the country as voters look ahead to Mr. Trump's 2024 race for the White House. I am thinking that Trump is a threat to democracy, and I think he needs to be held accountable for his crimes. I think it's a disgrace for this country what's going on to politicize the Justice Department. Among dueling protesters outside the courthouse, a handful of lawmakers, including the controversial conservative Marjorie Taylor Greene. They're not prosecuting President Trump, they're persecuting him. And it's all because he's the leading Republican candidate for the presidential election for 2024. She argues the former president's legal battles only make him stronger. Recent polling does show him gaining ground among Republican voters. Democrats have their own concerns. I fear if this just becomes a Trump spectacle 24 seven on cable news that he's gonna benefit in the same way he benefited in 2016. Former Former President Trump lashing out on social media against the Manhattan District Attorney and other perceived opponents as he prepares to fight this and other potential charges in separate cases, looming over his presidential bid. In Washington, Alice Barr, NBC News. Trump is expected to speak at his Mar-a-Lago resort when he returns to Florida. Following on the shooting of three people in Marion County, Marion County Sheriff Billy Wood says the victims were teens and friends, and there may be a connection to what he calls hybrid gangs. In a video post, he asked people to stop spreading rumors such as the works of being a serial killer. I speculate on social media, because one of the things I want each of you to think of and try to remember when you start to type is that there are family members out there reading it. The sheriff also called the community to help by passing on any information that could help in the ongoing investigation. The sheriff's public information officer did confirm with us that all three crimes are connected to a person of interest. The Florida Senate approved a six-week abortion ban on most pregnancies, even after protests from the gallery on Monday. WFLA's Libby Dean reports from Tallahassee. Defend the right to abortion. We won't go back. From outside the Capitol. Taking away choice is an act of violence. To inside the Senate chamber. Dozens shouted from the gallery at senators as they debated reducing Florida's current 15-week abortion ban to six weeks. People will die. I'm going to clear the entire gallery. Republicans followed through with that threat, passing the bill with only two GOP defections. So the bill passes. The bill sponsor applauded the victory for those opposed to abortion. For 50 years, the killing of innocent children has been legal. Legal does not equate to right. The bill also creates a new exception for human trafficking, adding it to the list of exceptions for victims of rape and incest up to 15 weeks of pregnancy. Despite the addition, Democrats still disapprove. If you vote for this ban, things will get worse. Women will get sick. Women will be permanently disabled. Women will face medical bankruptcy. Women will die. It is a cruel and inhumane bill for the, the women of Florida. If this bill gets the governor's signature, it would still be contingent on a case playing out in Florida's Supreme Court against the current 15-week ban. The next step is for the House to pass its version of the bill and then for the governor to sign it. Even if it does get the governor's signature, it will have to make it through the Florida Supreme Court first. And at the protests against the ban, police arrested some top Florida Democrats. And Senate minority 
leader Lauren Book were arrested last night. They were protesting at City Hall in Tallahassee after the Florida Senate voted in favor for the abortion bill. Police say most protesters left except a group of 11 people who refused to leave. The two politicians were arrested for trespassing. With hurricane season right around the corner, it's never too early to be prepared. The National Hurricane Center announced it is going to be changing the way it forecasts ahead of the upcoming hurricane season. WUFT's Dara Getter joins us now to tell us what's going to be different this year. The National Hurricane Center announced some new changes for forecasting the 2023 hurricane season. The biggest change will be the tropical storm outlook extending from five to seven days, so those in the path have two extra days to prepare. The NHC will also make graphic tools more accessible and live stream broadcast when there is a potential threat to land. But there is focus on our weather right now. They did release the 2023 list of hurricane names, and if these names look familiar to you, that's because you probably saw them six years ago. The names are recycled every six years, so the next time you'll be seeing these names is in 2029. Outside on your campus cam, mostly sunny skies. It feels like 88, and we've been feeling that south wind all day, keeping temperatures feeling nice and warm. It's starting to shift to the east, which is keeping us out of the 90s this afternoon. But across our area, temperatures are nearing 90 in Ocala and Jacksonville with that sea breeze having things feeling a bit cooler along the east and west coast. Over the next couple of hours, we're going to be cooling down into the mid 60s tonight, and there is the chance for some patchy fog. So I'll have more on what you can expect in your commute tomorrow. Thanks, Dara. A new North Central Florida Therapy Center for Kids is now open. ABA Results is a locally owned business providing behavioral therapy services to kids ages two to five. This particular center specializes in early intervention for children with autism. The goal is to teach as many skills as possible so they are prepared for kindergarten. Each room at ABA Results serves as a different purpose with one-on-one -on -one services for the kids. The three applied behavioral therapies include communication, social skills, as well as maladaptive behaviors. The Gainesville City Commission and Housing Authority will be gathering later today. They'll be meeting to discuss their goals of making Gainesville a great place to live and experience. Tyler Carmona went out into the communities to find out what people like about Gainesville. Tyler, how was your day? Allison, I was able to speak to some community members. They provided me with some valuable insight of why they appreciate their city so much. They also shared some things they don't like. All done. Rich Pusateri is your typical All everyday done. family man. He dumped it out. He dumped leave. them. On this particular Tuesday, he took his wife and kids to Bo Diddley Plaza for a day out in the city that they love. It's the people. I think it's that, that family feeling of, you know, you know people and you've been here for a long time. I've been downtown for 10 plus years, so I, I feel like I feel like it's a family. Gainesville City Commission and Housing Authority want to know what's great about the city. In fact, the topic is a meeting agenda item. So I wanted to go into the community to ask that exact question. What's great about Gainesville? Well, I think make Gainesville greater is the people. You know, they got to, you know, it got to be the people. The southern hospitality feel, you know, the small town feel. Well, I love that the Gainesville is considered like a big city, but I think it has like the small town aspects of it. So, I mean, you eventually get to know everybody. I don't want to call us just a college town, but uh, I feel like everyone's very, uh, closely connected here. The nature that it offers, whether it's like Lake Alice or even like the gardens down on uh, Gail Lemmerand, I think it's really pretty to like walk around on campus and just, you know, enjoy, especially with a good day like this. That's what they crave about the city, but there's also some parts that they could do without. I mean, parking is definitely <laughs> one thing that is uh, kind of a hassle. Besides get your use prices down, uh, I don't know, Gaines was a great city. But the question is posed because leaders say there's always room to improve. City leaders are meeting now to discuss the topic. If you'd like to follow the meeting after the newscast, just log on to my story at WUFT.org. Thanks, Tyler. Coming up on WUFT News First at 5, there are new details about the Chinese spy balloon that the U.S. shot down earlier this year. And a historic new country has joined NATO today. Find out more when we return from the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome back. There are new details about the Chinese spy balloon that the U.S. shot down earlier this year. 
Two current senior U.S. officials and one former senior administration official say the balloon, which first entered U.S. airspace over Alaska in January, was able to gather intelligence from several sensitive American military sites, despite efforts from the Biden administration to block it from doing so. The officials said this intelligence was most like, mostly from electronic signals, which can be picked up from weapons. Finland is officially a member of NATO. The process to become the organization's 31st member was finalized today. The Finnish foreign minister delivered an official document to U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blicken at NATO headquarters in Brussels. Finland, which historically was has remained neutral since World War II, sought membership in NATO just months after Russia invaded Ukraine. Neighboring Sweden has also applied to join NATO. That process is still ongoing. A jury ordered Tesla to pay $3 million to a former employee in a racial discrimination suit. The case was brought forward by Owen Diaz, an elevator operator in an assembly plant in Fremont, California. He says he regularly heard racial slurs on the factory floor and was subjugated to racist graffiti and a racially insensitive cartoon. A jury awarded him $3.1 million. A trial in a separate case was brought by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing. The agency had received hundreds of complaints from workers alleging racism and harassment at the Fremont factory. We have no rain on the forecast until this weekend. And you know what that means. It's about to heat up. Dara, how hot is it going to get? Right, temperatures this week are going to be in the 90s, but there is the slight chance for rain over the weekend. I'll have more on how high temperatures are about to climb when we return. You're watching WUFT-TV News. Certainly feeling like it. Temperatures in the 90s here in Gainesville today with that sea breeze having things feeling a little bit cooler on the east and west coast. Now our, dry con our drought conditions did improve here in Gainesville. We're now seeing abnormally dry conditions and a moderate drought is still plaguing much of North Florida. Central Florida is now seeing severe drought conditions outside in Crystal River. Really sunny blue skies. It feels like 88 and that south breeze shifting east has things feeling nice and warm but not in the 90s this afternoon. This evening we are going to cool down into the mid 60s and that south shifting breeze is going to give the chance for some patchy fog to develop. Temperatures are going to be nearing the 70s in the villages and if you are of commuting tomorrow morning, you might want to leave a little bit early. You're only going to be able to see about six miles ahead of you, three miles in Cedar Key and Crystal River. Now in the Midwest is seeing some severe weather. These areas, especially in red, are under the threat force from tornadoes and damaging wind due to this low pressure system you see moving north into Canada. Now this cold front that you see is going to make its way towards our area this weekend, but it's not going to be bringing us much rain or a chance for a tornado. There's a 40% chance of rain on Sunday, and that's our highest chance of rain this week. Temperatures at 93 tomorrow, but after that cold front passes through, we'll be dipping into the upper 70s. A 30% chance of rain on Saturday and a 20% chance of rain on Monday. It's not going to cool us off a whole lot as temperatures are still going to be well above average in the 80s and 90s the rest of this week. Back to the desk. The Gators men's basketball team had a rough season. But today, good news came the Gators way, right Talia? That's right. Stay tuned to hear about the return of a key player next season. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome to Tuesday Sports Talk with me, Talia Baia. Gators basketball guard Riley Kugel will officially return to Florida for his sophomore season. Kugel announced on Twitter today that he will play another season with UF. The Orlando native made the SEC all-freshman team. He played in 32 games and started in 17 of them during his freshman season. Kugel averaged 9.9 .9 points, 2.8 rebounds, and 1 assist per game. 
The six foot five player shot 46% from the field and 38% from beyond the arc last season. The Gators baseball team gets ready to take on Bethune Cookman for a midweek matchup tonight at six. Florida looks to keep their winning ways alive after beating Auburn in a three way game series over the weekend. UF is now ranked third in the nation with a 24 and five record for the season. Meanwhile, Bethune Cookman all comes off a series against A&M where they took two out of three games. The Wildcats now have a 16 and 12 overall record. Game time is set for six tonight at the Condron Family Ballpark. The Auburn baseball team has left town, but the Tiger softball team is about to arrive. The number 19 Auburn softball squad is traveling to take on the Gators in a three game series starting on Thursday. Florida suffered another SEC series loss at South Carolina over the weekend. It was a rough Sunday on the road for the softball team. The Gators only recorded a single hit all day long and perhaps their worst showing at the plate this year. Heading into the weekend, Florida was ranked 11th in the polls and 22nd in RPI. The Gators now sit at 13th. First pitch is set for 6 p.m. The orange and blue football game is nine days away and the Florida football team resumes practice today. Quarterbacks Graham Mertz and Jack Miller and Max Brown all completed some solid passes to the receivers, while running backs Montrell Johnson and Trevor Etienne have been focusing on catching and blocking drills. Billy Gonzalez, who was previously on Dan Miller's staff at Florida, returned to Gainesville as the wide receivers coach. Ricky Purcell, a returning receiver, is taking advantage of Gonzalez's knowledge and experience. He's on me, you know, and he's a, he's a big critic on me, and I love it, you know, and I, that's something I needed, you know, and, you know, I tell Coach G all the time, you know, let's get, let's get together to watch some film, and, you know, he, he reaches out to me and uh, checks on me before practice, and telling me to let, let's have a good day today, you know, he's, he's a player's coach, and, uh, you know, I really enjoy it. Also, did you hear the news? The Gators have a new addition to the team, Austin Simmons. This four-star quarterback committed to Florida this morning. He likes to continue his football career in Gainesville over 24 other options, including Arkansas, Florida State, Miami, and others. Simmons intends to be a dual sport athlete at UF as he wants to suit up for Kevin O'Sullivan's baseball squad. Men's March Madness has finally come to an end. UConn won its fifth national championship in program history. Connecticut took down San Diego State 76-59 in Houston last night. Throughout the tournament, UConn has been dominant, winning each of its games by double digits. Australian scientists are showing the world the very strange looking fish they got footage of in the dark depths of the ocean. A sea robot took this picture just above the seabed of Japan, 27,000 feet deep. This is the deepest fish to ever be recorded. It's called a snailfish and they have tiny eyes and a translucent body. The scientists captured two fish at 26,000 feet. That's a record for the deepest fish ever caught. <laughs> That's an interesting fish, but before we go, let's get one last check on the weather. Dara? We'll be waking up to temperatures in the upper 60s tomorrow with that sea breeze having things feeling a little bit warmer in Cedar Key. Now there is the chance to see some patchy fog on your morning commute. You'll see about six miles ahead of you with temperatures in the 90s this week. Back to Allison and Camilla. Thanks, Dara. BBC World News is next, and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. But your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a good night.